Hi, welcome to mini lesson number four. Today we're going to talk about how to get the Helmholtz potential from the canonical partition function. So last time we actually noted that the partition function for the ideal gas, which is a special partition function for a special model, was a function of temperature, volume, and particle number. And those are the same macroscopic independent variables that correspond to the Helmholtz potential. So what we're going to show today is that there's a totally general relationship between Helmholtz and the canonical partition function. Not just for an ideal gas, but for any physical system, there's a general connection. So what I'm doing here is a variation on what you can find in section 6.5 of Schroeder. Uh, my, my derivation is a little bit different than his, and we'll, we'll use a few different tools that Schroeder does not use. So let's see where we're doing, what we're what we're going to do. Um, first, I want to review the result about relating internal energy to canonical partition function. So remember that we derived an expression for the average energy of a single particle in a subsystem of the canonical ensemble only in terms of this derivative of the single particle partition function. We also noted even way back then, this was before spring break, even be, yeah, before a lot of things, if we had n total particles uh, that were not interacting, each one of those particles would have the same E bar. And so when you added them all up to get the total internal energy U, the answer would just be n times E bar. So another thing I want to note is that the derivative that you see up here is a special kind of derivative. It so happens that 1 over z dz d beta is equal to the partial of ln z with respect to beta. So sometimes this is called a logarithmic derivative uh, when you see it in this, in this way. Derivative of something divided by something is a logarithmic derivative. This will be useful coming up in a few minutes. And so finally, to note that if we actually use the composite z in this formula, we'll actually get the same result for this u in one step. And so we could say that u is equal to the partial of the composite z with respect to beta. And that ends up just pulling an n down from the uh, partial, from the, from, essentially from the logarithm, uh, so that you just get n times e bar. I've left out a bunch of intermediate steps here, and I think it would be good for you to check for yourself that this string of relationships is true. And a really important thing is to check for yourself that it doesn't matter whether you use the z sub n for distinguishable particles or indistinguishable particles. This, is, this remains true for either case. <clears throat> I guess I should say that you know, whether which one you choose to use is physically relevant, right? If you choose to use z sub n, uh, the wrong way, there, there could be other bad physical implications, but this formula doesn't care. So there's one more bit of math we want to do. Um, we've got this expression for u as a derivative with respect to beta. A lot of times we'd rather have things in terms of temperature than beta. Beta is nice in the partition function because it lets us not have a bunch of fractions inside our Boltzmann factor exponentials. Uh, but a lot of times we would like a formula in terms of temperature. Is that something we think we understand and can measure? So we can do a variation on the chain rule to swap beta out for temperature. Partial z with respect to beta is partial z with respect to t times derivative of t with respect to beta. So that's just a, a total derivative because this is just a simple single variable function. When you apply this rule, you get minus 1 over kb beta squared, dz, partial z, partial temperature, and that equals negative kbt squared, partial z, partial t. And so we can finally say that an expression for u in terms of temperature instead of beta is kbt squared, negatives have canceled, 
partial of ln z sub n with respect to temperature. And that partial is evaluated at constant n and v. So how do I know that? That's basically the setup of the canonical ensemble. So this whole reservoir subsystem scenario is set up so that n and v for the total system are, in fact, constant. In other words, temperature of the reservoir, number of particles, and volume are the macroscopic variables for that system. All right, so let's make the connection to Helmholtz now. Let's go all the way back to chapter five when we did thermodynamic formalism. And let's remember that the Helmholtz potential is U minus TS, so it's this Legendre transform of U that serves the purpose of changing independent variables from entropy and the internal energy to temperature in the Helmholtz. And so by direct inspection of the differential of F and applying the thermodynamic identity, you can see that F is a function of T, V, and N. And you can also, by direct inspection of the coefficients of the differential, note that entropy has to equal the negative partial derivative of F with, F with respect to temperature at constant V and N. So we can just sub in and solve for internal energy U, and we get this expression. And so this is the expression that we're going to use to derive our relationship between partition function and Helmholtz. And so the strategy is going to be to sub in for U in terms of as a function of Z, and we're going to generate by a couple of manipulations an expression that has a partial of something, call it A, with respect to T at V and N, is equal to partial of something else call it B with respect to T at V and N. And if this is true, we're going to claim that A is equal to B. So that's our plan for solving the, solving for the relationship between F and Z. So here we go. We'll start with this expression that we got before and substitute in U equals KBT squared partial LN Z sub N with respect to T. And you get this. Just divide by t squared, and we're going to pull Boltzmann's constant up into the derivative here. And then we've got this expression that a partial of kb natural log of z sub n is equal to this mass. And this mass, it turns out, is an application of a simple product rule for derivatives. And so we can just note, I um, mean, that if you took the partial derivative with respect to temperature of f times t to the minus 1, you would get minus f over t squared plus 1 over t df dt. And that's just the negative of this right-hand side right up here. So basically, this expression is equal to the negative of this expression. And that's exactly what our strategy was for developing this relationship. So we'll combine those last two lines, like I said, d with respect to partial with respect to T of KB ln Z at constant N and V is equal to partial of negative F T to the minus one with respect to T at constant N and V. And so we'll equate these two things inside these inner parentheses, that's this line, and then just do a little bit of arranging to get that the Helmholtz potential is equal to negative KBT ln of Z sub N. So this is a really important expression purple box indicates that. One thing that's important to keep in mind here is that this is the composite Z, uh, and that has really significant consequences. Uh, in particular, you can't make a mistake and accidentally sub in Z sub 1 for this. It will actually not be uh, a true statement 